Hey folks, Steve here with another Fall of the Third Reich video. Today we'll be looking at turn six, uh, which is almost smack dab in the middle in the middle of the game. Um, so I'm gonna t I'm gonna stumble my words today for sure. Um, after this turn is complete, we'll be halfway through the game, technically speaking. So um, we are kind of right smack dab in the middle of the game. In this turn, uh, we are very likely to see a D-Day landing in France, which will make the game a I guess, three-front war, where so far it's just been the two-front war, the false start in Sicily, now in southern Italy, making progress, the eastern front, which is opening up, and then we'll add uh, the northwestern front in, in true you know, combat order. If you count the Balkan front, I guess that would make it now the full four on the map, um, as delineated by these uh, front markers. But the Balkan front's been kind of an oddball. There is one thing I didn't do on camera, uh, that I kind of forgot about, and I just went ahead and executed it, was there was an attack on the, uh, I think it was considered like the Sarajevo unit or something, um, over here. Uh, the Yugoslavian partisans all attacked. It was kind of risky because if they, you know, if the Yugoslavians took any step losses, uh, they would not be replaced, but they managed to do um, a result that eliminated the enemy. They didn't have to take any step losses. And now you can kind of see there's like this, you know, front that they can advance and start messing up the Axis forces down there in the Balkans. And to be honest, there's not really a whole lot that uh, can be done about it because uh, I, I probably won't have the wherewithal to spend any of our OKH markers down there to help the Axis out. So I, I think almost by, in some ways, by default, uh, we're going to see the Balkan front sort of collapse in the Allies' favor and will provide... Um, some potential for, uh, some potential for, you know, knocking those areas out. Um, so with that in mind, uh, I'm going to do a couple of things. I also am going to make one change. I had transited this unit uh, into uh, Sicily. Uh, I'm going to actually leave it in the Mediterranean box because we would like to invade Athens at some point and pick up that uh, victory hex. But, at the moment, um, I mean, there's some things I have to do to make it so, like, I will have to eventually pull back this AL landing marker so that we can use it for Athens. But we still need a unit to actually try to land there. So my thinking is, sometime over the next turn or two, we're going to make the Greek uh, situation untenable. The Germans might have to pull that unit back, or maybe it'll be put out of supply and eliminated, and then it'll be empty and that should be hopefully a pretty easy, uh, a pretty easy capture uh, for victory point. So that that's my thinking. Now it's going to cost us one core uh, on the on the Italian front, but I think we have enough forces here that you know we can make do without that. I guess that, that's my thinking. So we'll see how it goes. Um, so a couple of those little corrections here, rethinking the situation again, allowing myself to do that. Um, you know, maybe that's worse for the Axis, but, you know, uh, uh, it's just me playing me, so who cares. Um, okay, so uh, there are some things going on with the reinforcements and with the whole impact of uh, D-Day that we should talk about. That's what the intro should really be about. So in terms of the coming uh, reinforcements, here's what we got. Uh, we've got the Italian units that we'll need a place, uh, two Axis, one Allied. Um, the Axis, you know, may not have a whole lot they'll be able to do with it, um, but uh, we'll see how it plays out. I'm probably going to garrison northern Italy. The Allies, you know, are just going to use it as a, another unit to try to attack with, I guess. Um, we have two of these Polish units. Now, what's interesting is that these units are not called out in the rules for any specific purpose, or really not even clear, like, are there any special rules to do with them? Um, so I'm kind of like, well, what, what do you do? Uh, surely they're not going to appear in Poland because we're not even anywhere near, I mean, we're not quite near Poland as the Soviets anyway. Uh, if I try to take a note from the Dark Valley, maybe we say these two units come in as Soviet reinforcements. Um, I think I'll just play them that way for lack of any other guidance because, I mean, if I looked at these as any other units... If they were just red and they were clearly Soviet, they would just come into Soviet reinforcements. And without rules specifying some sort of special case for them, I'll execute on that idea. 
Um, then uh, additionally, sort of the more uh, specialized reinforcements for the Western Allies, we get uh, a paratrooper unit, so another paratrooper. So we have one down in the med for the Americans, and now we have one in, in England, which is good. They all tag up with our British uh, paratroopers that we moved to the England box. Um, and there's really two uh, Commonwealth paratroopers in the England box at the moment, so we've got plenty of stuff there. Uh, we have this mulberry marker. So this is representing uh, the mulberry uh, uh, mobile dock, um, which is really, if you're not familiar with what the mulberry construction is, um, go look it up on Wikipedia. It's actually pretty cool and, and neat to, to understand exactly what it is. It's basically a, a dock structure that they shipped from England to uh, the coast, and it was basically like portable port infrastructure. It's kind of interesting. But what it does mechanically in-game is that you place it with a beachhead marker, and it will make it so that that beachhead marker can be used to supply both U.S. and Commonwealth forces and has a three multiplier for your shave marker rather than a two. So it's sort of, you know, you could look at it as, as the main base of operations for the Allies as they enter the continent so that they can get to uh, other areas of importance. Uh, so that, that's how I would, I would like to think of it as, I guess, or that's the way I see it uh, in terms of the activities that we're going to see happen. Um, and then we also have the uh, FUSAG markers, which stands for First uh, U.S. Army Group. And this represents the sort of fake out. Um, it's kind of interesting to read in the rule book kind of what they represent, but they are a phantom army group supposedly under Patton, which was used to tie down German forces at uh, Pas de Calais. And <clears throat> uh, if the Allies invade at beaches C, D, or E, uh, when these markers are available, the Allied player may immediately place one on any German infantry units uh, in the Northwestern Theater, not within two hexes of a target invasion hex. Um, such units may not move until an allied unit moves within two hexes of the unit or we move into uh, the east area around here, basically. So if we look at you know where C, D, and E are, it's here, here, or here. So if we, as long as we pick one of those more northwestern territories, um, we can plop down these FUSAG markers on other, other areas, right? So, for example, if we invaded here, hmm, hmm, why would we do that? If we invaded here, <laughs> then we could, like, place some of these guys over here and over here, potentially, and I have to pick which ones we want, and those units can't move. They're sort of stuck because they think a different invasion site is the target. And this, I mean, it, it's an interesting, neat little, like, special rule to help set up the reality that was, like, the Germans weren't exactly sure where they were going to cross at. They were certainly thinking, like, well, probably over here, right? Because that's closest to England. That's the shortest route. Um, and so thinking that that's probably going to take place or just not knowing where the Allies were going to land, they, they landed further out here, but that sort of confused these guys up here. They didn't, you know, they, they had a slowed reaction. So this gives us the opportunity to, like, invade here, for instance, these guys can't respond, some of these guys can't respond, and that gives us, if we can blow these units out of the water, a great opportunity to, uh, you know, come over and take Paris and start pushing east and maybe knocking these guys out of supply. Um, so that that's the real value here, and it, it is the sort of, like, part of the reason why you might want to, you know, invade over here rather than invade over here, right? Because if you do, you don't get those markers, these guys can kind of swarm over if they wanted to. Um, now the thing is, uh, the way that the Northwestern Theater works is you can kind of see, um, without me zooming in too much, that at each site, E, D, C, B, A, um, there are two landing hexes for each one, and you are, I think, supposed to invade. You pick the area, A, B, C, or D, um, and you have to put your landing markers in each one and conduct the joint invasion together. So I can't, I don't, think I'm allowed to unless I had extra beachhead markers, which I don't appear to have. I couldn't say, like, oh, I'm going to go to D and E. I have to say I'm going to D, and here are uh, the two uh, landing markers. If we go for Pas de Calais, 
Um, there are two landing hexes, but their destination is only one hex. What you do is you roll separate attacks for that area if we decide to go there. Um, so that's sort of the layout in terms of, all right, what, what is our decision? Where are we going to go? How are we going to do it? Um, we're obviously going to use a lot of paratroopers. We're going to try to get as many guys onto the continent as we can and then leverage that um, to, you know, come out this way, take Paris, maybe cut these guys out of supply. If we're able to do that, um, then uh, we'll be able to, you know, have a really weakened uh, German defense as they try to scramble to occupy a Western line here and you know, then we're getting in the Battle of the Bulge and all that stuff. So we hope, as the Allies, for this turn to be very productive. Um, and we're going to want to move our Schaaf form worker from where it is down here later in the turn, uh, maybe replace it with the three marker, and then the four marker is going to go up in our, mul in our mulberry marker, which should give us, you know, 12 hexes. So one, two, three, four, five, that's enough to get to Paris. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, that's enough to get down to Dijon and cut all of that, uh, zoom out a little bit, you know, that's enough to get us all the way down here, and then, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, um, you know, that, that mulberry with a four shape marker is enough supply projection to get us to Antwerp in the Schelp campaign that we would need to execute to open up Antwerp. If we do that, then we'd move the shape four marker to Antwerp, and then we'd have a range of 20 hexes from Antwerp, which basically covers you know, this whole part of Europe there, and that's really where we want to get to. So knowing how to extend your supply uh, scope, you know, what areas and what order do you need to take them in to get the most supply bang for your buck, I think is an important part of, of this game and understanding how to play the allies, the Western allies at least, and I think I've got it figured out. Now it's just going to be a matter of like, well, um, do, do the invasions go well? Are we going to the right place? And can we use our few sag markers um, First U.S. Army Group numbers uh, markers uh, effectively enough that we can really make our gains here in taking Paris, cutting these guys off, doing all of that kind of thing. Um, so there you go. And now I and, and the other thing is I have to kind of pretend like I don't know where it's coming <laughs> as the axis. So if I'm like, oh, I've got re I have replacement points for the axis. Where am I going to put them? Uh, mm hmm. I don't know. I have to either pretend like I'm not going to put them on the western front, or maybe I will put them on the western front, but that's sacrificing that reinforcement going to the east, and maybe I'll roll a die to figure out where they're going to place them, right? I don't know. We'll have to figure it out, because I think as the Allies, I have a pretty good idea where I want to go, which is the historical landing spot, but yeah, we'll see. All right, I'm going to think on that. I'm going to take care of these reinforcements, and we'll come back for the strategic air phase. Okay, so the reinforcements are placed. The Germans put... Uh, the Italian units here just to cover more of the beaches in case something gets squirrely, but they may end up moving south eventually. Um, the Allies put theirs in, you know, they didn't have a lot of, a lot of great options. They had to go in a town or city, so we put it in Bari to max our stacking, uh, in that hex. Um, the Polish units, uh, Soviet Polish units went up over here, way out there, uh, in, uh, Mulig Mogilev uh, to come in, and then uh, obviously all the stuff up here went up into the England box, which, gosh, the in England box is so large, we've just put the units out there in England itself. Um, so now we get to the strategic air phase, and there is something cool about this turn. Uh, we do have Fogia, Fogia, however that's pronounced, which means we get our 15th Air Force, which is an, a, I guess, American Air Force there. Uh, which can operate in the Mediterranean, and we can do uh, Mediterranean transit bombing, factory bombing, oil bombing, carpet bombing of the Mediterranean, and interdiction of the Mediterranean. Um, so I think... Um, I need to think through this. Um, I think this is certainly an area like it for the first time, I guess, in the game. We have some some decisions that we need to make uh, because 
we are going to have some combats in the Northwestern Mediterranean Theater. Um, and we do have air forces that can do the carpet bombing. I think what I'll do is I'll have Bomber Command and the 8th Air Force continue to do factory bombing. But let's, let's try to do some carpet bombing, since we've not done that before. Um, and I think it's going to be worthwhile. So the Allied player must announce which hex is being bombed when he rolls for combat resolution. Hexes that are successfully carpet bombed. Ignore all in-hex terrain effects except for forts, and the attacker shifts the odds, column 1 to the right. Uh, and in the Northwest Theater, both Bomber Command and blah blah blah. Oh, interesting, you can, you can maybe carpet bomb the same hex, which provides a two-shift. That might be useful eventually. Um, we need a 3 to 6 roll is required for the mission to go ahead. And let's see, when do we when do we roll for that? I guess that's the thing. When do we when do we roll for that? Like, do we roll for it now? We're doing carpet bombing. Um I'm trying to look at the Sequence of play. Maybe I just I'm, I'm not seeing it. Um, oh, okay. Yes, okay. During the Allied action combat phase, we have our carp carpet bombing step. Okay. So yeah, we are going to go ahead and assign the 15 Air, Air Force to carpet bombing. The intention there is to carpet bomb some of these German hexes uh, or German controlled hexes with with forts. Even though uh, the carpet bombing doesn't help us with forts, it will help us with uh, the mountains and get us that column shift which means we should be able to break some of these lines and then once we're past that fort line things should be a lot easier to traverse through Italy we'll grab Naples all that stuff so there we go we'll we'll, we'll do something different for once and we'll do that um, but since we are doing the factory bombing we'll go ahead and do that now um, so we are in 44 there is a Luftwaffe marker in the home defense box, so that's a minus three to our die roll. First, we'll roll for bomber command. I rolled a six, um, so that is a three. Three replacement points lost. Interesting. Um, and then we'll do eighth air force. I rolled a four, so a one. So all together, uh, four factory. Created replacement points are nullified. We have a destroyed air force, and uh, we bring one home to the Luftwaffe or to the home defense marker from the east front. Um, so we are down four replacement points. Uh, so that that's pretty rough for the Axis. But there you go. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and get into the replacement phase. So there you go. The Axis has. Eight replacement points, one minor replacement point, um, and they'll need to decide where is that going to go and what are they going to do with it all. So um, none of the other replacement values are going to be different or changed. So I'll go ahead and do all the replacement stuff, uh, and then we'll get into Allied invasion. Okay, when it comes to replacements, um, the Germans did put one unit. Uh, the, they've now started to build quality over quantity, so uh, now that the front is going to start to shrink, they can kind of bring back some multi-step units to kind of better hold individual hexes, at least that's my thinking. One unit did get sent over to the west um, into Essen, which is kind of being looked at as a garrison force for some of the more important victory hexes in the west, but the rest of the reinforcements went to the east. I did rebuild a Luftwaffe unit so that the eastern front will have some Luftwaffe cover uh, to help defend uh, because we are kind of reaching the point where you know we, we, we can't give up hope there either. So there weren't a huge number of things that the Axis could do. They're just building back what they can. Um, with their one point, I guess they will bring back a uh, Romanian, uh, Romanian unit. Um, I think I screwed up my stacking over here somehow, but there we go. Uh, a remaining unit, um, and that's all they can really do. 
the uh, the allies had more replacement points than they needed. They were able to uh, restore to full strength some British units over here, some American units uh, over there. Um, and I am just realizing I couldn't put this Italian unit where I put it. Um, I th think I need to put him somewhere else, so I guess I'd have to put him down here. Because he can't stack with the Commonwealth, he's considered a U.S. unit, so my bad. I, I think I need to put him here for the moment. Anyway, um, okay, so the reinforce, uh, replacements are done. Again, I can't, I can't act like I don't know exactly what I'm going to do in the invasion step here. But I try to play a little dumb as the Germans, right? I can't give them too many, like, yeah, I put some units over here, but they went in some logical places. I don't know exactly where uh, the Allies are going to land. But now, um, I think we can talk about D-Day, right? Here we go. Uh, so, beachhead placement segment. Well, we have our Commonwealth and U.S. markers. Where are we going to go, guys? Well, I, I, th I think... I am going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to do the historical. I'm going to stick historical here. Now, I could do different stuff, and I know there's folks out there that's like, why play war games if you're just going to do what history did? Well, I I want to play through the history in this one. I realize, you know, the game can allow me to do some ahistorical things, but that's okay. You know, I, I think the way this game is designed and structured, it's like, you the the game is designed to kind of help you show why the Allies did what they did, why they chose to go where they go. There are logistical concerns. Just because you have an option to go ahistorical doesn't mean that your ahistorical alternative option is as good as what option was historically taken, or those other options have other risks that need to exist and give you a reason to still not do them and to do the historical thing, right? We could have invaded, you know, here right away, but we didn't have the same amount of forces ready to go. We could have invaded elsewhere in Italy, but we didn't have as much air cover, right? So all these decisions should factor in, right? You can choose a riskier path, and does the reward, you know, compensate for that risk? I think in some cases it doesn't, right? So you're just, yeah, you are going to kind of funnel into a certain set of options, but, I mean, that's sort of the reality of the situation, right? You don't just get a freebie and say, I'm going to invade Bordeaux and expect invading Bordeaux to be just as good as invading anywhere else, that kind of thing, right? So, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about the game. I should get back to the game, right? All right. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to have the U.S. marker here. We're choosing C. Uh, landing C, which I believe this is the, the historical location. So there you go. Uh, Commonwealth going here. We're going to put the Mulberry marker in the Commonwealth zone because that is the furthest east out of the hexes. So that's what we're going to do. Um... And then uh, we're going to designate our units. Uh, excuse me as I kind of shuffle around the rule book just to make sure I'm doing this in the right order, though I don't think it's um, it's a huge deal. Uh, okay. I'm going to try to see when the few sag markers go down. I guess it's as I'm invading. I guess I just do this all at once. So the Americans uh, are going to have, let's see. From six turn beyond, we may put three corps per marker. So three American corps are going to go here. And we are going to use a paratrooper. Technically, that isn't part of stacking. Um, and we'll also do three British... Okay, my camera's goofing up. So I'm three American Corps plus an American paratrooper in the first hex uh, of the invasion over here. Make sure you guys can see that. The British are going to use three Corps, and they're going to spend both of their parachute markers to ensure we don't roll badly here and then we get our few sag markers um, okay and we can put them on some of these guys but not all of these guys uh, so 
And technically, I can't put them on this guy, but I can put it on one on that guy. Uh, let's see. Put it on that guy. Uh, and then we'll put it on these guys over here. Okay, so you guys can see. And it's one marker per unit, not hex. But uh, these all have either one unit or a unit and a fort in them. So we're going to stop these guys because they're out of range. We're going to stop those guys up here. These are all... Uh, infantry. I can't affect armor, so I can't pick that unit because it's an armor unit, and I can't pick that unit because it's two hexes, even with a waterway in between. Um, I think that still counts as within two hexes of the target invasion hex, not the... Uh, oh, my camera's screwing up again. So we will probably stay away from those fusag markers uh, as we perform our action, but we're going to hopefully knock these guys out, and then we're just going to have to contend with those guys as we head southeast, but I think we should have okay coverage there. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, I th think I'm all set there. Um, this should be a pretty good invasion. Um, I'm going to pause here and just take a look at the situation and make sure I don't want to make any other changes to these few sag markers, which is ironic because my camera just screwed up and maybe I should have done that before I recorded more, but oh well. Okay, I'll see you guys in a second, and then we'll start rolling some dice. Okay, here we go. We're going to do some D-Day action here, guys. Um, so we'll, I guess we'll do the Americans first, because it doesn't really matter. Um, so let's figure out our terrain. So that is a uh, special terrain we normally don't really have dealt with, and I'm sure I'm going to pronounce it wrong, so I'm not even going to say it. People give me crap about how I pronounce French things, so I'm not going to worry about it. B-O-C-A-G-E. I'm sure someone will say in the comments how to pronounce that. I appreciate that. I could Google it right now, but you know what? I have limited free time, so we're just going to game. Um, it has no effect on invasion, which is good. Um, so that's good. Uh, it is a non-mechanized unit, so that's a minus one. Uh, we are an allied air trace in 44, so that's a plus 2, and then a paratrooper is another plus 1. Um, so, I think that's a net just plus 2 to the die roll. Yeah, so die roll plus 2, we, there's a very good chance we'll have an overwhelming success. We'll see. Plus 2. I rolled a 2. So 2 plus 2 is a 4, is a, 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 it is a success. Reduce one invading unit, eliminate one defending unit, and surviving, surviving defenders retreat one hex. Okay, so uh, this guy's eliminated. We will take a step loss on the American unit. Uh, and attackers advance. Um, I need to look at the paratroopers. Okay, so we will leave the uh, paratroopers in the beachhead marker hex, and then these guys advance. Um, does a regular su success, not an overwhelming success. The rest of these guys, these three units, will advance like so. Um, and then we're going to have our, uh, our landing here, which is clear terrain, but it is a mechanized force, so that's a minus two. We have our two paratroopers, um, which will add a plus two to nullify that, and then we have allied air trace. So this is also a plus two die roll. Impossible to fail. I rolled a three, plus two is a five, so that's another success. Um, so uh, we're gonna eliminate one defending unit. So that is the whole unit, so this Panzer division is lost. 
Uh, and then uh, we will take our step loss and we'll just do something very similar here. Here we will have the paratrooper stay back on the marker. We'll reduce the unit and then these guys uh, are in. So we are, we are now on the continent uh, in the Northwest Theater and we have a clear path to Paris that the Germans will have to do something about. Um, there you go. Okay, so no overwhelming success, but the Allied invasion was successful. We lost a little bit of guys, but I mean, we have so many reinforcements coming from behind that uh, I'm, I, I'm sure the Allies are feeling just fine and dandy with the present situation. Um, and they have supply out a pretty good ways um, here once we get to the Allied <coughs> Excuse me, shape placement marker, or shape placement step later. Okay, um, now we will get to the Axis OKW OKH phase. Um, and, and it is where we need to kind of decide, um, will the Axis spend any, you know, any of its oil, basically, if that's the way you want to see it, purchasing OKW markers for the Italian and Western fronts while dealing with the fact that they still have the Eastern Front nightmare to contend with, and now you know, really, the Axis resources are are strained even more uh, because of what is going to be coming down the the bend. Um, so, good good stuff here. Um, I'm going to take myself off camera and really think through the Axis stuff, but I will perform the purchase segment. I will place the OKW markers, and then I'll go ahead and do the whole Axis action phase, and we'll come back and see what the Allies and Soviets will do as reaction. Okay, here we are after the Axis uh, activities. You can see over in the West, um, you know, we were able to use movement, you know, because operational movement is so, you know, flexible and you can move double movement as long as you don't enter an enemy Zoc, uh, allowed me to create sort of a rough wall, um, one to protect Paris and some screening to keep these guys from being pushed in a, in a way that they'll automatically get knocked out of supply, so while I don't have a whole lot of hope for these guys, we at least have created something that will slow down the Allies. That's the thinking with one armor unit over here. Uh, again, just fielding a Zoc so that the Allies can't zip all the way down here and, and start causing supply problems. Um, a delaying tactic to be sure, but I mean that's the game we're playing, right? It's a delaying tactic game, so that's where we're at. Um, so we pulled as much as we could over from here but you can see, you know, obviously those uh, first U.S. Army group markers are, are going to tie down a few guys for a little while, uh, keeping them frozen uh, in time as we fight our way through. Um, it meant we vacated a couple of places down here in Italy, like Marseille and the area around it, but, you know, it's, you got to decide what to do somewhere. And I left these guys in place because, you know, might as well wait for the Allies to come to us. We're in defensive terrain as best as we can be. That's good enough for the moment. Uh, in the east, or you know, I didn't really, I couldn't really do anything in the Balkans, so there you go. But in the east, uh, you can see I'm trying to just get something going to to block this incursion into Romania. Um, it, but it, Romania will probably fall. <laughs> uh, and then over here, we're just trying to get into good defensive terrain. Uh, over here, we're deciding to hold on to Minsk and the Riga to Minsk line as long as we as long as we really can, because if we lose that city, it, it's going to cause some really bad effects with the Soviets' uh, ability to project command. Um, and we did have one attack over here against the Russians that just forced a retreat, but there you go. Um, everything else is just a little, a little too tight. I mean, the only other attack that might be worthwhile is one over here, and I'm not sure that it's worth it. Um, for the step loss exchange, honestly. Uh, and it's only targeting an infantry unit, so I don't know. It's, that just, it, it's like, do you pull back or do you attack? And I have opted to try to pull back where I can because we are going to get into the nice congested lines from here down through here. And the more units we have to plug up those hexes, the harder it will be for the Soviets to actually uh, smash through the line. So that that the more guys we keep in the field, the better. That, that's my thinking. Uh, we have a lot of guys in the dead pile, as you can see in the top left of the screen. The reinforcement rate is not that 
not, not, not that good, really. Um, but I think that's it. You know, all, all of our OKH markers went into, uh, you know, the east front. One here, so we had a lot of space to attack and move guys back. And down here to move some guys back. It was really a question of range um, and plugging a four into uh, Mince gave us the most options. But nothing really else really mattered. Uh, I didn't, you know, I, the only thing I could have maybe done was decide to do something in the Balkans. But it's just a goofy area, and I, I don't know. I don't know. This is probably where my mistakes can come in, where like, yeah, maybe I could have thrown a command point down there to do something, but uh, it's not like you can do a whole, whole lot, really. Um, that's what it feels like. You know, anything you do can compromise your, your position, and uh, I don't know. That's just the reality we're working in here. Um, Okay, uh, yeah, so I think we're, we're good. We're going to move on to the Allied Reaction phase. Um, so I'll take care of that, and uh, the, the, I'll do both the Allied Reaction in Combat, Soviet Reaction in Combat, and then we'll come back and talk about uh, Axis Exploitation and Attrition. Okay, so uh, the Allies had a stack of three Commonwealth units that did a reaction move here and attacked into Naples, and they managed to take it. So Naples is taken. That's going to be really important, I think, for um, the supply situation out here. Uh, and then <laughs> in the east, the Soviets had had knocked out the units in Minsk but couldn't take it. Uh, and then in the Axis exploitation phase, they managed to move a reserve uh armor unit into Minsk to retain control of it, so um, the, nothing was really lost uh, on a, tr well, I might lose something for attrition. Um, six, seven, eight. I don't know. Eight hexes to an Axis city. Um, so yeah, this guy's actually still in supply. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, he is still in supply. Good job, buddy. Um, this guy was out of supply, though, and he is removed, unfortunately. Um, and so is this guy, actually. So, yeah, we lost some, we lost some guys to attrition. Um, for a second, I thought that wasn't the case, but no, it is. Um, okay, so the uh, axis side of the turn is pretty much over. Uh, we can do our cleanup of our OKH markers. Um, and that's it. So um, still doing okay, surviving on the east front, setting up a defense in the west, trying to hold on in Italy. But now we get to the Allied side of the turn, where things are going to get interesting. Um, and I need to start figuring out, you know, how to manage the Western Allied chafe markers better, because it's going to get a lot tighter um, as we're playing through and we're trying to figure out, like, how do we, um, how do we make use of everybody uh, the most effective way possible. So um, I will come back... Uh, here after I do a cut, and we'll have done the shape placement, as well as the Allied movement, uh, and I guess I'll do the Stavka placement and Soviet movement before we start doing combat, just so you guys can kind of see where we're at, because we're going to do the carpet bombing, we're going to do various combats that are going to matter across the whole board. Um, and yeah, that's what we'll do, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, here we are after the Allied movement. You can kind of see, you know, we're, we're moving out. I guess I should zoom into the different fronts. You can see the Allies are kind of branching out, um, leaving a guy behind a little bit to defend the beachheads uh, and some Zox and whatnot. Uh, but we are trying to get situated where we can start busting up this line a little bit and, and try to proceed forward. Uh, in Italy, I mean, the basic thing is we're just moving everybody up as we can. Um, I am moving some shafe markers around now, so a shafe 2 just as a fallback point for supply, 
we have Shafe 3 in Naples. Uh, so we have a projection of 12 uh, supply hexes, which will get us up to northern Italy, and then we can figure out if we want to go somewhere else from there. Um, up in Mulberry, we have our 4 mar marker, so we have 12 hexes from our landing zone, which should get us you know, pretty far uh, close to Antwerp and those areas that we'll need to get to uh, to really break open the supply situation. So I think so far everything there is going okay. Uh, in the east front, um, we are now cutting that poor guy out of supply, getting ready to attack him, bringing everyone around. Um, we have uh, some Stavka markers. Uh, our four is in a town up here, so we can just get busted through and take Minsk. Uh, over here we have uh, the two marker in the city of Vinitsa, so it can be a four range to help kind of bust this situation clear. Um, if we can get in the mountains behind these guys, that would help, uh, I think. And then we have uh, the three marker uh, out of Odessa, which is flipped to the six value, which has enabled us um, to surge down and around, capturing that port to act as a uh, supply provider out to this guy. Um, and I've surged down through here into Romania. It's going to be really key that I attack these guys and clear them so that we can maintain the supply line in Romania, um, but then Romania is going to collapse, and so will Bulgaria here because of this, I think. I think I have the right number of units down here. But doesn't, you know, it kind of doesn't matter now because we, we, we captured Bucharest anyway, so um, they're, they've got a lot of problems. Ma major supply problems anyway, uh, really. So uh, that much is going good, and then I guess the other thing I forgot to do was what are these guys going to do? Um, so I do think we go into Belgrade and capture it, which is going to put... Well, it won't put everybody out of supply, because they can count to Nis, I guess, and then can count sort of out and around. Um, but this certainly is going to be some supply problems eventually. So. That much is good. Um, technically, that's another victory hex. So we're up to uh, six victory hexes, um, all for the Soviets, technically, if you count the Yugoslavian unit as a Soviet unit. Um, okay, so that's it for the uh, sort of uh, movement phases. Now we're going to have the combat, which, again, is going to involve the carpet bombing step. So I'm going to think through down here in Italy... Uh, what to do there. I think what I may try is have it be this hex and then have these guys attack here or well, these guys attack here, these guys attack here um, and see what that does for us um, and then that way we, if, if we're fortunate enough that we clear the whole line there then it's onwards to Rome and, and onwards to the rest of Italy um, as we you know head up which would be ideal uh, we could even think about doing a, a split-off invasion of Marseille just to kind of help our supply situation in the north and then think about doing uh, Athens because it, ultimately this guy's going to be out of supply here very soon and he's going to go poof, which will enable us to slip a guy down there pretty easily. Um, so yeah, I, I think the ally situation is, is coming up clean. Um, and then we'll do the Soviet combats, which, uh, well, and I can't, can't forget the northwest. Combat's up here. Combat's over here. Combat's everywhere. I'll do it all off camera. I'll show you the aftermath. Um, I suspect this will be a pretty critical turn uh, of o simply overwhelming the Axis in terms of losses that they couldn't even hope to replace at this point with everything that they've lost so far and, and all that. So we'll see. Okay, so here we are uh, after the combats. I guess maybe I should start with Italy first. You can see uh, we eliminated units, but we did not advance. Um, so we're so we're almost pushed our way through the line, but not quite. And it's possible the Axis could try to, um, you know, come up and and defend those areas. That's certainly possible, uh, but probably going to see a collapse of the line. Um, in the north, we mostly have removed and pushed some units back. Um, so that we're getting a little bit closer to Paris um, and working our way through that way. Nothing too, too crazy. In the east, you can see we've got Romania kind of well uh, 
outflanked and outmaneuvered. Um, so, it, you know, and at this point we're getting supply out of this port, so there's really not a whole lot the Axis can do to save Romania at this point. Uh, we did push through a little bit here and are sort of almost into Lvov, uh, but not quite. Um, we would want to get there with operation or with exploitation movement if we can. Um, it's really independent on what the Axis does with their react reaction move. We did take Minsk and have sort of blown open, you can see, uh, a line, a hole in the line there, and uh, we did eliminate that unit up there. So it, we, we have made some good progress. Um, I think one of the challenging thing is some of these areas, it's like, because the line is a lot longer and the way I have my units bunched up, they can't all guarantee, you know, a good a combat along this line at the moment. Um, probably next turn we will. So I think at this point it's like, well, if the Axis can keep pulling back and just retract and pull back, pull back, pull back, they may actually be able to, you know, still have a decent defensive line. But we're about to see the Romanians and the Bulgarians totally out of the game uh, here very shortly um, with the way things are going. Now I have to make sure I understand when they surrender. Um, so I'll check that right now. Um, at the start of any Soviet reinforcement segment that four or more Soviet units are in supply in Romania. Um, and at the moment, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, it's basically guaranteed. There's no way that we can do anything about changing that ultimately, even if we try to do some wacky stuff like moving these Romanian units down to try to cut a supply line. Um, that won't be enough. So we can call Romania as good as gone now. They're they're done. They're kaput. That's it. End of story there. Um, so yeah, what what can we do with the Axis reaction, I guess, is the next question, right? Sort of the next phase. Um, and knowing that now that we have uh, our, our reaction phase <laughs> uh, with the Northwestern Front involved, it's like... Where where are we going to be able to go um, for a counterattack? I think in the west it makes sense to try something over here, if only because you know we've got something to try. Um, but I think the most we would want to do is like move here so that we fence these guys in a little bit. Um, anything else we give up our position too much. Uh, so we hate, yeah, a suicidal attack wouldn't work at there at all. Not worth it. On the east, if we only get the one, where, where does it make the most sense? Um, I think we, I think we try, uh, let me see what the, ugh, yeah, the Zocs are going to be the real problem. Um, uh, I think we try something here, if we can, um, uh, it's so tough because there's just not a lot of space to work with. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Move that guy here and Yeah, gosh, <laughs> that might be as good as it gets when we open this up for guys to sneak through here, but I think they're going to have a hard time. Uh, well, I don't know. Man, that sucks. I don't really have... I don't have a lot of options. I don't have enough reserves for this to really work. Um, and because we can't leave Zox... Um, The only way we could do it, I guess, I'd do something like one, two, do that. That might be the best reaction move we've got. We don't have a lot of options. Um, and that's just to keep keep us from having a totally blown open line uh, across the board. We at least got z mechanized Zocks that can pen somebody in. Um, and I think we've got because of the, the Zoc here, we can keep this guy from trying to get into Lvov, because he'd be out of supply. Um, 
So we've, we've at least got that going for us. Um, okay, so I think that's the end of that phase. Reaction phase is over. Um, allied Soviet attrition segment. Uh, everyone is good. I believe, um, no matter which way I look at it, everyone's good. Um, so, then we have the exploitation phase. So, let's see. Um, we have these guys, I think, move... I want to get us over into the, the Italians. Um, just move all these guys up, basically, um, and that'll do it for them, uh, I think, because it's, the mountain's going to cost, when we remove the fort and we do that, I believe, um, mountain in this kind of terrain is pretty nasty for exploitation movement, um, mountain is th three, which means we could, yeah, I think this is as far as they'll go. Um, we could move forward like so. So we are, we are at least well flanked up in here. Um, in the Western Front for exploitation movement, I'm not sure we have a lot of options. Um, I think there's definitely an opportunity to go like one, two, three. And we would still be one, two, three, four, five. That, um, something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Some of this is tough because what we don't want to have happen is that this German unit swing out around us. Um, that would probably be a problem, but I think we can kind of arrange things in such a way. Ugh, yeah, that's that's tough. Um, do something like that. That might work. Just want to make sure that we don't get outflanked um, and focus on trying to attack over here. Let's still have these guys here. This guy here. I think that'll work. I, I kind of don't like the way that this is set up, but I'm not sure I have an option otherwise um, for that to really work. Uh, one tricky thing I've noticed is that we don't have... We didn't take Cherbourg, so we don't have a port that we control. So getting guys on the continent could be a problem. Um, I'll have to look at how that works, uh, again, for strategic movement when we get there, but I think that's what we'll have to do there. Let's see, what's this guy going to do? Do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so he can't really put us out of supply, but he could certainly sneak around a lot. I don't know, just got to be careful of the axis. We, we don't want to be feeling like we're too safe over here. Um, for the West Front um, exploitation movement, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, this guy, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, just to ensure we're capturing all of that good stuff. Um, one, two, three, four, five, Bam. Bam. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's good enough. 
some of this is like, you know, where, where are they even going to go? Where can they go? Um, sense to leave Minsk. I'm trying to think. The way the turn order goes, someone could try to sneak in, maybe, if they, I guess they, as soon as they enter this hex, then they're done, so maybe we just leave that as is for the moment. We don't need that much exploitation movement for it to be valuable right now. We don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Um, Maybe maybe that's an erroneous thought to have as the uh, person on the offensive there, but I think that works. Okay, uh, so that's exploitation, and then we have our transit stuff. So um, will the Germans do any strategic transit? Uh, I mean, they certainly could. Um, they could try to save this guy over here. Um... send him back to Milan and hold Milan or hope to hold Milan uh, let them fight for Rome I guess give up that hex because there's no way that we would be able to hold it is likely how that's going to turn out um, save a unit for a day uh, in the west I don't think there's much that can be done um, over here these guys are kind of stuck um, can just barely count to get to supply, but they can't rail out. Uh, and then everyone over here, um, I mean, I you know, there's just not there's not much to do transit movement with, or you know, no place to go really. I mean, everywhere that's pretty much everyone's in place that can be in place. I don't know that there's much more I can do. Um, I guess I could send a couple of guys into Minsk. That would have been the reason to do exploitation movement, I guess, with that armor, but it wouldn't have done much. Um, so yeah, not a whole lot of transit stuff to really do, uh, to be honest. Um, I guess, uh, for the Allies, there, there are things that we should do for transit, but I need to think through the, the rules here. I might be doing things a little bit out of order, but, uh, most of that is just so I can logically work my way through it. Um, so give me a sec, I'm going to try to figure out what the Allies can do to ship guys into this region. Maybe they should have gone back and captured um, a port. And if that would have mattered, I'm going to fix that and have one of these guys snake back here and capture a port or something. So we'll see. Okay, I am I am going to fix something. So during exploitation movement, I will have uh, these guys having captured uh, Cherbourg. So we have uh, we actually have a, um, a controlled uh, hex, or a controlled port, so that we can move guys in uh, there, and then we would transit some Americans. Um, trying to see... It looks like... There's some terrain goofiness and a couple of hexes. Um, right here, which would be another uh, port to take, uh, but I'm not sure if I can make that move or not. Okay, I had a, I had a like, go sanity check myself. So, uh, La Havre has R's on the hex, which means um, I don't believe I can put reinforcements there unless I control ruin. Th that's based on the rules... 7.1.1, which are mostly about Antwerp, but honestly um, are valid, I guess, for for uh, hexes marked with R attached to ruin, is how I interpret that. So while that case isn't spelled out in the rules clearly for this case, you can see there's uh, little, let me zoom in even more, you can see little R's right there. So I read that as needing to control Ruin to put reinforcements into La Havre if you control it. So, um, or, or rather, 
no, maybe it's the reverse is true. Um, okay, no, I, okay. We got it backwards. So, as long as axis units aren't in these two hexes, we could put reinforcements in Ruin, but we don't control Ruin anyway. Ruin, however it's pronounced. But instead of going back to Cherbourg, um, I had this guy cross the river and take uh, Le Havre, which enabled us to do the transit move. So there, there you go. Um, now we have a port, and we can bring units into port. We technically don't control uh, Le Havre, or Cherbourg, so technically that's still a problem, but we'll fix that. Um, We'll fix that at the beginning of the next turn, uh, for sure. Um, that way, I, it kind of it slipped my mind, so that's my bad. I'm, I'm sorry. I should have thought that through um, so that we can have units, Americans or whomever, come into those ports as part of transit moves. Because we've got a whole bunch of Americans stuck because they can't enter right now. Uh, but we'll fix that soon. Um, should be able to fix that soon. It's kind of a weird, like, getting units out of the, the box into places because it you use strategic transit to, um, I don't know, it's, it's just weird. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just odd. It's just odd. Um, there might be some errata that I need to go look at and verify again on how to get units out of those boxes if they're not, you know, it, it, however which way you want to look at it. But I think I can't move these guys down here until I control, you know, ports and I can bring them in. And because Commonwealth can't stack with Americans, I had to sort of take a you know, t t t take an expedient option, but now that we control that port, we'll be able to bring Americans in on subsequent turns. So we'll we'll start making gains here, but this is sort of, I goofed. I should have I should have sent somebody off to capture Cherbourg right away um, for the port purposes, and I did not do that. So that's my bad. Um, a mistake as the Allies hopefully won't be catastrophically bad. So there you go. That's all the transit stuff done. Um, this video is probably longer than I wanted it to be because of that confusion and my goofiness here. But victory, um, I, we're sitting at, uh, with Belgrade controlled, uh, about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven victory points. Uh, and of course, we have got some big old problems down here for the Axis with these guys kind of pent up. Romania is going to fall. These guys are going to have supply problems. That guy's going to have a supply problem. Um, all sorts of nastiness, which uh, I should note that I did pull an invasion marker off uh, the board there. And I guess technically, I guess technically I could do the same with my U.S. marker, actually come to think of it. Um, so I will do that. So there's a U.S. marker. There's an allied marker in the Mediterranean box here, which we'll use to potentially capture Athens soon. Stupid camera. Uh, we have this marker that we just pulled off. Um, and we will have uh, used for additional invasions by the U.S. And the reason why we can do that is that our U.S. units can trace supply back to the mulberry marker. That's one of the special abilities. So we can pull that U.S. marker off. We'll be able to do additional landings somewhere. Um, and that will continue to put uh, some pain on the axis. So we could potentially try to invade, you know, we, can, we could invade somewhere, I guess. I'm, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure where, but we could, in theory, invade somewhere. Um, okay. Uh, I might even have to reread that role because maybe I need both a Commonwealth and a U.S. marker to invade one of these other sites, you know, I don't know. I'll have to look into it. But anyway, um, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, sorry that this turn six is probably longer than I wanted it to be. My apologies. Um, see you in the next one. We're halfway through the game. Uh, we'll see how it goes.
See ya.